job in this world. <clears throat> to be a first lady is a blessing. But to be able to lead your people and for your people to actually believe in you is more, is called double blessing. When I became first lady, as uh, rebellious as you all know I was, I don't know if I'm still at. I am at least now quiet. <laughs> there was a time when I was struggling. I was struggling because I needed to find myself. I was moving from a world where I am my own captain and I don't take orders from anybody. And then I found myself in a territory where everything that comes out of your mouth has to be programmed like a remote control. <laughs> so in some cases, I backfired and it bounced. And people say, hey, this one, if you have to <laughs> Some people said, I am not a first lady material. And I started looking for a prescription of the word first lady. I needed to understand what the definition of first lady in uh, the Guinness Book of Record, I looked, there was no definition. I looked in all the, um, every book that you can imagine, dictionaries, uh, my class one book, my a seven book. I tried everything. I just did not see or understand the definition of a first lady. And the first time I joined the Offlet, the African First Ladies Organization, in my first meeting, I saw this woman who was quiet, and that one is the truth. But very assertive. She knows what she wants, she put her case across, and she will not allow you to change her own subject until you answer her own question. And I was seated there because I needed to know who I want to align myself with. Because they said, birds of the same feather. In that meeting, I saw a woman that I admire. I saw a woman that was a true leader. I saw a woman that was making a difference. And I saw a woman that earned the respect of all of us ladies. Mm -hmm. And I said, I have my peak. And I went to her and said, my name is Fatima Madhavir. I am the new kid on the block. <laughs> and she introduced herself. Oh, my name is Monica. Even the name, the name sounds nice. <laughs> I said to her, you know, I'm new and I'm learning. 
And she was not afraid to show me what to do. She was not timid. She was not scared of my presence. When other first ladies were so nervous, when other first ladies feel that they will not give me the space to own my space in that room, she was there to guide me. She was there to show me through. When it becomes so hot for me in Sierra Leone, I call and cry to her. I say, what do I do? And she will say to me, listen, you are a leader, and if you want to lead your people, you will have to accept whatever is thrown at you. So if I am where I am today, at the most difficult time, leadership is a very lonely place. To be at the top is the most lonely place you will find yourself. It is lonely, very, very lonely. But this woman had made time for me. Mm -hmm. She's been there for me. Every program I have, if I run it with her, she's supportive of my program, even though she's not a Cerebrian. And whenever I made a recommendation to her, she would work on that recommendation that would work for every other African First Ladies. Because in my own way, I know what our problems are. And I know why we are scared of talking about the issues that are killing us in Africa. And I was not ready to be silenced under no circumstances. I was not going to be silenced about rape because it was happening. I was not going to be silenced about, I mean, sexual violence and, and battered women because that is something that we are beginning to accept in our continent. I refuse to accept that early marriage should just be the norm. And these are things that most first ladies don't want to talk about. Because it's not part of their own prescription. It might cost their husband their job. I was not worried about Mother Bill losing his job. If I can save one child and Mother Bill losing his job for me, we have achieved something. So that was not my problem. But every time I come to her and say, what do you think? She made the sense out of my nonsense and we make it great together. So if she's here today, I know people are wondering why are we calling her the third first lady? It's not because her husband has three wives, no. <laughs> That's not the case. Namibia is a young country. And since they are independent, she's the third first lady. So before her husband, there were two other first ladies. And that's the reason why you are calling her the third first lady. She the husband that they have three wives with. <laughs> Just in case. She was the madame and she remains the madame. And she had just lost her husband a few months ago. She just lost her husband a few months ago. And I can tell you. Um, uh, President Haile is one was one of the most dynamic leaders we have in Africa. He was, I mean, the time I spent with him, he is one of the most gentle husband, a man that values women, a man that actually show us first ladies that we do matter. When you visit him. He will be the one to serve you food on your plate. He is the president. He will not walk in front of the first lady, not in this world. He walked behind the first ladies. And he will tell us, it is your turn, please. Tell me where do you want me. You know how power is so crazy, the way power makes people change. But that man did not change until the day God called him home. He was one of the greatest warriors we have in Africa. He served Africa. He fought for Africa's freedom. He fought for South Africa. He fought for Namibia. And then became president of Namibia. He was exiled for over 30 years of serving Namibia outside Namibia. And that is who we should be celebrating. When we remember people like Nelson Mandela, we should remember people like Haile too. Because whatever Nelson Mandela did, he did the same for his people. 
Namibians were exiled for many years because, of course, you know, our big brothers refused to leave our continent. <laughs> you know? But by the grace of God, we will get our continent back. Yeah. Yeah. And we will only accept partners who respect us partners who value us and partners who see us as equals, not as slaves. Because me, I'm tired of this slave mentality. And it is really now, now is the time for our generation to start celebrating the people who have given us this small oxygen that we're enjoying. And we fight together to actually liberate ourselves completely, liberate ourselves mentally, physically, emotionally, financially, and then they will value our continent because our continent gave everything to them, but still they don't value us. And I'm tired, I'm done. But today we are here celebrating you women. I'm just here to get crashing. Because when the women call, I will go. You've asked me to come to Dallas, and I'm here because you asked me to come. Thank you. I'm here. And as a party, we owe it to ourselves to be a success story. Mother Bio is our leader. Mother Bio today sits on that throne. But we are all responsible for Madabio's success. If he succeed, it is our success. And believe you me, if he fails, we all fail Sierra Leone together. Because they won't just say Madabio, they will say SFPB. So our job is to make sure we do whatever humanly possible and make Madabio become a success story. So together, when we say the transformation of Sierra Leone started under retired Brigadier Julius Madabio, we all will also contribute and say we were there when it happened. Yes. And we are part of the journey. And this is the journey. Gathering here, celebrating, is not a big deal. But the time you take, the money you invest, and the, all your investment into the party, to keep the party in power, that is your own contribution in changing the narrative in Sierra Leone. Because when you support a good political party and then that political party deliver for you, then you are also part of that journey. So you don't give up on SLPP, because I can tell you, if I say this now, tomorrow you know social media is going to be another story. I thank God my people are sleeping. Oh, it's seven o'clock. They are now they are now the people who are praying, they will be watching me. So let me pick what comes out of my mouth. Before they read a party at the mosque. But I'm saying this and with all sincerity, the program that SLPP has is a program that will benefits radio. And that if we are able to implement that program, if we are able to have energy that we so dearly crave, if we are able to feed ourselves and be able to feed other people outside our country, I believe the rest we can do for ourselves. Because with energy, we'll be able to provide jobs for our young people. With energy, we'll be able to have industrial companies coming to our country. And these are the things they are trying to limit us from having. Because if we are self-sufficient, they will not be telling us what we do with our diamonds or with our rutile, with our boxers, with everything we have. We are providing all of these things to make the world a better place. But yet still they say we should not have lights, we should not have food, we should not have proper water to drink. We don't have the right medical facilities. 
and how many Sierra Leoneans are here contributing to America's own medical facility? How many? Now imagine if every Sierra Leonean decides to go back home and just serve for one month and come back. That's your time you will spend there. You will not only be saving lives, but you will be training other people who cannot afford to be in America like you. Yeah. And those people will serve our people. So please, don't say it's not my problem. Because if your country fails, it is your problem. You will not understand the value of Sierra Leone until you are 70 years old. That's when you will understand the value of Sierra Leone. Because by the time you are 70 years old, you know you want to go back home. That's when you will now start to pray for lights in your country. That's when you will now wish that your country has good health facility. That's when you will now hope that when you open the tap, water will come out and the water that you'll be able to drink. So who is going to fix it for us if we don't go and fix it for ourselves? So please, ladies and gentlemen, as I'm here, my job, I am on a crusade. And my crusade is to say, serve America as much as you want, but remember your motherland and remember where you come from. You can sing the national anthem as much as you want, but as long as you're a black person, one day they'll ask you, where do you come from? <laughs> In fact, you will understand how they will ask you where are you coming from when you come to when you come to the immigration. So that's the reason why I don't even change my own phonetics to British. Because I am only carrying a paper. They did not want to take their passport, they will take it from me. But the one passport that they will not take from me is the one that comes from Kono District. You cannot take that from me. Because I am a true Kono woman, yes. born and bred in Kono. That is why I am not finesse. So you don't see polish on me. Because rough diamonds come from Kono district. Please, let us love America. Let us be obedient to America. Let us serve America. But remember to serve your motherland too. Remember to serve your fatherland too. Because until we all collectively decide to go back home and empower our people and change the narrative, we'll only be here explaining every day. And then by the time you are 60 years, the only job you will have now is to be on social media complaining. And that is not the job that will give you money in your account. If you don't have a job that will give you money in your account, have a job that will give you more this world and the world after by yes. serving your people. Yes. So again, I have never introduced myself as your perfect first lady. I have never said, you know, I am the best. All I say to you, give me the opportunity to serve you and judge me later. Yes. That is all I say to you. Give me the opportunity to serve you, and then when I am done, you can judge me later. That's your right. But I am most grateful to retire Billy J. Julius Mother for you every day. You know, you do not have a husband in an African setting that gives your wife the free will to do what they love doing. My husband has given me that opportunity, <laughs> given me the space give me his support. He has been my strongest cheerleader. He is at the back of every project that I present to him. When I said hands of our girls, he said which one? When I said free sanitary part, he said I have the water. When I said gender equality, he said we will be equal. And now when I said to him, we have to stop this Peter fan from marrying our girls, he said it will not happen under my watch. No, that is the leader we have in retired military. So I am grateful that God has blessed me with such a man who is not scared of the power of a woman and who is willing to share his own space so every woman will have the opportunity to grow in Sierra Leone. 
When he says the future of Sierra Leone is in the hands of a woman, people will say he wants to give power to his wife. <laughs> but believe you me, I can say this to you again. The, the, the future of Sierra Leone is in the hands of a woman. Which woman, I don't know. But it's in the hand of a woman. So Manabio is building a foundation. And he's building a very strong foundation. So when God bless that woman to come, a lead, that woman will start on a foundation that is stronger. I'm not saying it's going to happen 2028. But I am saying women have to take themselves seriously now because we have the give bill, we have our 30%. That is the starting point. Mm -hmm. So let us take ourselves serious. And when you are in politics, be in politics for seriousness. You cannot only be cheerleaders. When you are in politics, you make sure you serve. And you serve at the front, the middle, and the back. Every day, every time. And believe you me, your people will remember you. And today, we are here celebrating Aminata Amara because she has served. She has been there. With everything you will say about her, when it comes to the work of the SMP people, she is at the forefront every day and every night. So for me, don't say I like Aminata Amara. I just like anybody who likes SLPP. And I like anybody who is dedicated to the SLPP cause. Because with the SLPP cause, we'll be able to transform our country. I don't want to begin to provoke my brother and sister there on the other side. Because I'm going to be very honest, when I went into parliament with the prohibition uh, bill, uh, pro prohibition against child marriage bill, the APC, they were there like wild lion protecting that bill. The SLPP, they were there as my shadow, making sure that bill passed. This is the fastest bill that has been into parliament. Go in one day and come out as a bill and an act immediately with the support of the APC and the SLPP. With the support of the leader of the APC and the leader of SLPP. With the support of the Speaker of the House. With the support of the Clerk of the House. Everybody on that bill. There is not a single person in that parliament who was not in support of the bill. I mean, for you that watched the, 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 the debate, Catherine Tarwani, this woman is uh, the MP for Bombali, the city, Makini town. You know what that means, right? Yeah. When you're from Makini, you cannot support the SLPP. Okay. But from day one, when I started the Hands of Our Girls, Katrin Tarwari has been one of the MP that has stood with me for the last six years. She's APC and I'm SLPP. When we are supposed to present the bill in parliament, Maya Mazoko is the one who presented that bill in Parliament and Katrin Tarwani from the APC second bill in Parliament. That is to show you that we can work together as a family. We, will, we are able to put our political differences aside any day, any time when we are willing and when we want progress for our country. This bill is one example in Parliament. This is a bill where the, the leader of the opposition will tell members of parliament if they don't pass this bill, it will be a cost to them in parliament. This is the bill where the speaker of parliament claimed the bill as his own bill and said, I am not asking you to support the first lady. I am asking you to support me as your speaker. This is the bill where the, the leader of government business, Yuma, stood in parliament and said, we are not here to debate the bill. We are only here to fix some of the spellings and just correct certain things and let us pass this bill. This is the bill where every woman that had the opportunity to speak from both APC and SLPP, every one of them said, please pass this bill. That shows that when we want to be united, we can be united. And that is what I'm praying for Sierra Leone, that we will be a united country and that we will see each other as each other's keeper. And that our country will grow and all of these problems 
Because when you sit there and you're imagining that you want to come and kill the first lady, if you kill me, there's going to be another first lady. Are you going to kill that one too? <laughs> you know? So instead of wanting to kill me, please, come, let us be friends. Mm -hmm. And let us work for the interests of our country. And let us put policy, not politics, but policy. Let us deal with our problems with policies. Let us focus on your policy. Explain what you want to give to the people. Let me also tell you what my party will give to the people. Now it's up to the people who they believe. If they know that you've been a liar for so long, they know that whatever you are telling them, you are only lying. But if they know that this woman that stands in front of us never lied to us, they know when I open my mouth, I only open my mouth on something that I own. I'm 100% sure is going to happen. You know, I'm like a blind man. When a blind man says, I'm going to throw stone at you, he's already standing on the stone. <laughs> so when I speak on behalf of the SLPP, it's because I know what Mother Bio wants to do. And I know when Mother Bio say, I'll do this, it will happen. And that's Mother Bio for you. So he's not just talk and do. In fact, now he's do and talk later. <laughs> so that's what he's doing. So I'm asking you people, Dallas, thank you. Thank you for hosting me. And for those that are not SLPB, it's not a crime to be in APC, but it's very fashionable to be in SLPB. So thank you. Uh, if you are not SLPB today, say the first lady have invited me to come to SLPB. Come and join us. Let us go and fix our country's problem. For all those that are not SLPB, I want to say thank you for being here. And I want you to know that there's only one Sierra Leone we all have. Yeah. And let us focus on the progress of our nation. Yeah. Thank you to every one of you for coming. Thank you to the two ambassadors who have been my big brother in this America. I don't know when uh, Mr. Bari goes to Saudi Arabia. Now I have to go to Saudi Arabia just to visit him. But I want to say thank you to both of you for all your support and uh, for looking after me. And uh, of course, the FSC staff for all the food. And uh, <laughs> even when I want to diet, they will not allow me to diet. Um, Pesima, Chairman, you know, they said the young, sh we should allow the young to grow. Pesima is one great example. I believe this is from my own heart. He has served the SLPP MF. So it is not about age anymore. It's about action and who delivers. So I'm grateful to have worked with all of you. And I'm grateful to you, my women's leader. And when I look at Amar Aminata, let's just be honest. Me and this woman, don't we have the same character? <laughs> now you see why we are close. Because we are one and the same people, we're just from different mother. You know? We would, we would say things sometimes we don't mean them. But when it comes to serving, we serve with our life because we know our life depends on that. And I hope you guys will give opportunities to people who are going to be serving you and give them the chance to serve you and not listen to gossip at all. Because gossip is just to bring us back. Some people will bring you into their fights, fights that is not your problem. They want you to join the battle that you did not start. That's what we need to leave. Anybody who come with their problem, say your problem is not my problem. Please, let me focus on my own problem. Focus on your own problem. When we meet on political problem, let us deal with our political problem as political people. Carry your load, let me carry my load. You cannot recruit me for your own fight. Please. So I'm begging all of you to, you know, continue to support her. Because for every time this woman do something in North America, it has always been a success. And success stories don't come by easily. If you have somebody who make you succeed, continue to deal with that person. Because maybe tomorrow you're the one who's going to be at the front and you still need that person to make sure you are at the front.
So thank you to all of you for being here, to all the media, and I want to say DJ Omo, I am a fan. Yeah. I, am a I am a big fan of yours. Please continue doing what you do. You are super good. If no one tells you that, I'm telling you, you are super, super thank good. You. And you know why I'm saying it? Because I love music, I love dancing. Yeah. Do you know what that means, right? So, my dear sister, these are my people, and my people are your people. So, yeah. And we love you. And uh, today, you will not make me cry. It's not going to happen. And remember, we have jobs to do. We're going to New York, and you're going to serve us as a leader. And from that, this is the beginning of your journey. Amen. What you have done for Namibia, no one will write the story of Namibia without having Monica in that story. That would be an incomplete story. That I want you to know. And for me, you have, you have been a great leader to me. You have channeled me the right way. You have supported me when I needed support. When I needed a big sister, you've been there for me. You have never questioned me or turned your back on me. It doesn't matter how busy you are, you make time for me. And it is my own way of saying thank you to you and to say to you, you have a sister here today, tomorrow, and forever. And I love you from the bottom of my heart. And thank you for coming here today. I love you. Thank you. Okay? You see, she's crying. I have not going to talk to you again. Everybody, thank you very much. Please, DJ Umu, I don't praise you past night. So play music, let me dance. <laughs>